Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And today I'm so excited to have one of my really good friends, Dr. Eric Z. And he is going to be talking about all about your immune system and what he's doing as for his whole family to go through this whole COVID-19, how to get through it, what kind of food he's eating, all the oils he's doing and all the different remedies. So welcome, Dr. Eric. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, first of all, thank you, Chantel. And thank you for just putting this together in a way where we're, you know, we're calming the storm and we're giving people empowerment. And we just actually did an interview for my show and you really helped enlighten people about how worry can infect your immune system and put you more susceptible. And that's a tip because it all starts in the head, quite frankly. And so we've been doing a lot of mind-body exercises, meditation and prayer, and and a lot of me and self-care, which is critical. So before we go into that, um, to answer your question, I'm known as Dr. Z online. Why? It's kind of funny because most people botch up my last name. It's Zelensky, but it's spelled in a way where people are like, what? So people just started calling me Dr. Z several years ago and it stuck. My wife and I founded a website known as Natural Living Family, and you can go to naturallivingfamily.com. And we serve five and a half, six million people a year with just tips and remedies and how to cook from home and garden, all kinds of fun things. And we're faith-based. So we have a lot of Bible verses for all kinds of different topics, and we encourage people to live an abundant life. And so... You can check me out on my website, best-selling author of The Healing Power of Essential Oils and more books on essential oils. And we're here to help and serve and quite frankly, shoulder the burden that we're all going through. And God's given us so many tips over the years to really weather the storm without a bat of an eye. And so it's been very easy for us to do this because of our preparation. So we, if we can give you a little bit of preparation, we'll consider that a win. Well, I will tell you, um, when I came to your house, one of the things that I absolutely loved was that you guys do a bunch of organic gardening. Mm -hmm. And right now I do feel like people, you know, everyone's talking about shortage of food, shortage of food, blah, blah, blah. And so if you can create something in your backyard and you guys have done such an amazing job, like that was amazing for me to see. So talk about your backyard a little bit and talk about some of the things that you've done and about your organic gardening kind of classes that you have. Yes, I love it. I, I, um, I'm actually looking. I forget the, the, the website. We have a free screening of Mama Z's gardening class. Um, oh, MamaZGardening.com. I just checked it. So go to MamaZGardening.com. My wife has been teaching annual local classes in our backyard to our local, we call it natural living family. And she just goes through her aroma garden, her herb garden, her tropical garden, her deck garden, and her raised bed. I mean, we have six different gardens and another one in our home. And so, and including our inside garden, because that's the other thing. It doesn't matter how much space outside you have. You can have a one bedroom city apartment and you can and should garden in little pots and tower gardens, all these little things. So Mama Z has been essentially raised in the garden. My wife, Sabrina, I mean, her mother is a master gardener. Her father is a PhD agri-scientist. So it was like, it was her heritage the legacy that she was raised with. And so that wasn't my legacy. I, I remember it's kind of a funny story, but um, first time on my own young man lived in a home. I bought some cool plants. I thought I was going to have in my home and ended up killing them almost. And I met my wife to be, and she's like, Ooh, let me start taking care of those plants. And so when we started dating, Sabrina really took care of my hibiscus and my um, um, whatever African violet. And she essentially resurrected them from the dead and doing very simple things. And so, you know, that was a really cool way for us to to just establish that bond and me to recognize that, you know, she knows what she's talking about. So yeah, the tips and the tools and the trades that we've developed over the years are wonderful because it's, it's, you know, we don't make all of our own food. Again, we don't have a farm, but to be able to go out right now and have all of, you know, the, the peppers or the lettuce or the tomatoes that we really can eat and all the herbs that we want and just having that grounding experience where our hands are in the soil and giving our kids something exercise productive to do because we're all homeschooling right now. So part of their recess is go outside and get the work, get your hands dirty. And so we try to make it fun. And it's a wonderful, wonderful experience that quite frankly, 
everyone should be doing something on some level, even if it's what Sabrina calls like a windowsill garden. You get some little pots and then you could start growing peppers and tomatoes and cucumbers and herbs. I mean, basil and cilantro. These are really, really easy things to grow in your house. And you also change the environment because of the cleanliness of the air that will resume because that's what plants do. They're going to clean your air. Um, you'll get a fresh smell in your house and you'll start feeling a different energy because now things are growing, not dying. And that's the problem with a lot of people. Like we mentioned just a few minutes ago when we were chatting, um, you know, you got to love your home. You know, you could buy a new home if you can afford it, or why not you do what Jill Winger talked about in one of my episodes in my coronavirus support series about make the home of your home of your dreams. Because Mm -hmm. a problem that a lot of us have right now, you feel cooped up, You don't want to be in the place that you're at because you just don't like it. Well, make it the way that you want it because I don't rarely leave my home. I have a home-based business. I'll leave for church, maybe go out to an event to see some friends, go to the gym, but I'm home all, all day. I love it here. We made it that way. And it's just because what we like. And so now's a great time too to reinvent your house. And this is all part of it. We're talking immune boosting strategies. If you hate where you live, if you hate your job, if you hate who you're married to, if you hate, 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 now's the time to start shifting that. And And I want to say this is that maybe you've tried growing basil and cilantro on your windowsill and you've failed. Well, I want you to know that you absolutely need to get Mama Z's class because just because you failed at it before, she, her kind of mantra is that gardening is for everyone. And that as long as you know the right tricks and the techniques and all the tips, you can grow your own veggie, your herbs and your flowers. And this is the thing. So I had this lady who tried to sell me this like tower and it looked gorgeous. And it was like $900. Have you heard of those things that oh, yeah. are like those towers are like 900? Yeah, we have one. They're fun. <laughs> They're fun. And that's great. But you don't, you, you can get that and you can spend 900 or $1,200 on that, which is fine. But you, with her, you guys have these little, I mean, you've got some pots that are this size. You've got pots. I think people think, oh, well, I need to have, like you said, all this space. Yeah. And I, I maybe what we'll do, you guys have to go look at the pictures that they have, and they have a short video on their site that kind of shows the size of the pots. Because for me, you're, you're, you think, oh, I need this huge garden and I need all this space. And they teach you how to do it without that, which is really wonderful. You know, Sabrina doubled the garden space in our, we had a really small backyard at our, at our the last home that we had. And she, doubled the garden space area by buying five gallon buckets, super cheap at Home Depot, drilling holes in the bottom of them. And then we ended up having like 20 different tomato and pepper plants all around our little raised bed. I mean, that's another strategy that you could do. And container gardening is the way to go. And again, maybe you don't have a place to put 20 buckets, but just do two, just do one. I mean, it's fun. We grow pineapple in Georgia. And um, this is not a tropical environment. It was down to 35, 38 degrees last night Um, because we have a little area in our home. (laughs) It was really funny. Uh, We have a much bigger house now. We have soon to be five children. So we've grown. But when we had a smaller home, a smaller family, our dining room, I'll never forget it. We have old pictures. I should pull them out. Our dining room was just filled with plants. Like you could barely even sit down. I mean, like we had a choice, sit down at the dining room table or put plants, but we had the hibiscus trees, the pineapple, bay trees, the size of to the ceiling. Like when it got cold, Mama Z brought all the plants inside and it was like, just deal with it. And so it was really fun though. It was kind of like a jungle room, the kids called it. And, you know, it's a way of life that, for her, I I don't really don't know what she'd do with herself if she didn't have that. Again, it's what all that she knows, but it's so healthy and it's such a beautiful release. I mean, we're talking about stress relief. There's nothing better, arguably, than getting out in the sun, getting some vitamin D, spending some time in prayer, meditation, or just singing some music and, and just getting your hands dirty and just letting go. I mean, it's pure meditation. One of the things I've realized is that there's so many chemicals in laundry detergent and the soaps out there. So I either make it myself, it's actually pretty easy, or I use my green fills. If you go to chantelrayway.com soap, 
I'll give you my free recipe for laundry soap. Or if you just feel like buying one that's really clean and not filled with tons of chemicals, you can get it there. ChantelRayway.com slash soap. Hey guys, I'm on my way home from being on national TV talking about intermittent fasting and I'm answering the question, does intermittent fasting help you lose weight? Maybe you guys have tried intermittent fasting and lost some weight, but now you might just be stuck in a rut where you're not losing as much as you want. Well, I've interviewed over a thousand thin eaters and I've learned that intermittent fasting is just one of the tools they use, but there's so many more. There's nine other principles that they use to stay thin. To get out of your rut, click here to watch this free video. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about essential oils since that's what you are known for. But for immunity and the ones that are really antibacterial and antifungal, if you had to name your top ones or can you share any kind of recipes that you've made that really is like a great serum that you could make that will help? It's immune boosting. You know, I, I didn't realize what I was doing when I did it. I'm like you, Chantel, we're very much led by intuition. We're led by, by the spirit. And I do believe God gives us those little nudges. About a month ago, I was just really drawn to create a new blend because I'm about to write my new book. I'm actually supposed to have written it already. And thankfully, my publisher keeps on giving me a little bit of leeway. Um, it's just been a lot, man, these last few months, really. Um, and my heart goes out to everyone right now who's just you know beside themselves with panic. I came up with this blend. It's going, it's kicking right here. If you're watching a video, it's my little diffuser. It's um, equal parts of frankincense serrata, um, eucalyptus radiata, or you can use globulus if you have it, uh, key lime and bergamot. And I love this blend for a number of reasons. And I'm calling it my COVID blend because it's really helping me get through the season because frankincense is very grounding, very healing, immune boosting by itself. The citrus oils, the bergamot and the lime are extremely effective at reducing anxiety and stress. It's like proven, like proven research type of stuff. And we've been able to help people under the guidance of their healthcare professional get off of anxiety and depression medications using oils like this because it it helps the brain produce the neurotransmitters and the healthy hormones, happy hormones that change your mood drastically. And eucalyptus, we all know it's an expectorant. It's a great oil for respiratory support. And quite frankly, when there's a deadly virus going around, like the flu, like coronavirus, you need respiratory support. And they all jive well together. It's a very nice blend. It smells nice. So that's where I start. But most people, by and large, if you buy essential oils, whether it's through doTERRA or Young Living or Eden Gardens or Rocky Mountain Rose, whatever, all these different companies, they all have their quote unquote immune blend. Most of them sell blends, sleepy time blend, immune blend, focus blend, love blend to help between the sheets. Like there's all kinds of fun things you could do with essential oils. So get the immunity blend. And most of them include a mixture of clove oil, cinnamon, bark, eucalyptus, rosemary, lemon, and orange. Um, Again, similar to what I have here, but these are the oils actually been shown to to help kill the flu virus. And they've been shown because all of them by and large are antimicrobial. Now, certain oils have more an effect like tea tree traditionally is the antifungal oil. It's great for fungal infections. Candida, lavender is another good one for candida. Um, bacterial, that's the sky's the limit. Like virtually everyone, virtually every single one is good for bacterial. Um, clove tops the list, oregano, lemongrass, and thyme. They're very, very strong, but they're also caustic. And I say that because we need to be very careful. Caustic meaning burn. So I'm just not going to slather oils on my skin, especially oregano or, or, or lemongrass or thyme. You could burn yourself. Clove will really burn you. So you always want to dilute essential oils with a carrier oil. And that could be as simple as the olive oil you have in your kitchen pantry, or it could be more of a traditional um, carry oil like jojoba or sweet almond. So, you know, the thing that I'm trying to encourage people to do is for us, kind of go ahead, but it also it really reinforces how to use essential oils. We haven't really changed our lifestyle per se. We might be doing a little bit more of the things that we normally do, but the reality is we've lived a detoxed lifestyle 
And so we already make a lot of our own stuff. We already diffuse regularly essential oils. We, we already have things in place like systems, processes. And you've seen it. You've seen Sabrina. You've seen all the different, you know, homemade lotions and soaps and things that we do. And we shift the blends depending on the season because, you know, different season, different needs. And so what we found is that making essential oils and quite frankly, natural living part of your life is absolutely key and essential. And that's really what I'm seeing come out of this experience because for the first time, in a long time, maybe forever, there's a mass global awareness about, am I healthy enough to get through this? Mm. Because the reality is, it's the true immune compromised people that are at risk, period. And we know that just like the flu, and just like cancer, and just like you name it, these diseases that kill people on a regular basis. So people are starting to ask questions. Am I healthy enough to get through this? And so and I'm really hoping that people come out of this experience is like, you know what? This was an eye opener for me that I was afraid. And let me, let me end with this. If you are afraid of COVID right now, of literally getting sick, that's the sign that you're not living a healthy enough lifestyle. Because every single person that I know that do what they should do, Exercise, food, water, cleanliness, staying away from toxic chemicals, mind, body, meditation, prayer, living a good life. We're not worried about getting sick. None of us, not one person. That is so true. That's so good. Because we realize God developed our immune system to protect itself. And if we're doing our part to protect and nurture our immune function, we don't have to worry. And so just take it for what it is. It's not a judgment call, not at all, but it's a wake-up call for a lot of us. It's the same wake-up call that I had you know, 17 years ago when I became a Christian and I was really, really sick. I was depressed. I had suicidal thoughts. I was an alcoholic. I was abusing drugs and narcotics and I was just unwell. That was my wake-up call, realizing, you know what? I'm not living a good life and started to shift and started to change. Awesome. I want to talk about eucalyptus oil for just a second because it is so anti-inflammatory and it does stimulate your immune system and it's so good for your throat, your chest, your lungs. And so there are three different types of eucalyptus essential oil. And I want you to kind of dig deep and talk about those three in specific of what are the three different types and how are they different? Um, well, the, typically, most companies typically sell two, um, eucalyptus globulus and eucalyptus radiata. Now, I'll be real with you. Um, I have not seen too much of a difference in the different species to state that you use this type for this condition, this type for that, because it comes from the same product. It comes from um, the leaf. Interestingly, though, you know, it's just a different uh, genus of the same species. Now, cl- um, cinnamon is interesting. And I want to bring cinnamon because cinnamon bark oil is very different than cinnamon leaf oil. Mm-hmm. And that's the comparison because cinnamon bark is rich in cinnamaldehyde, which is a chemical that can really help balance blood sugar and help with diabetes. But cinnamon leaf doesn't have that component. It's, it's much more potent for it comes to antimicrobial, antibacterial conditions. And so when you're looking at different genuses and different, spe- you know, within the same species, there are nuances. And so there are different chemotypes. I actually talk a lot about this in my book, The Healing Power of Essential Oils, because it gets like, what what is the chemotype? Here's what this means. What is the most prominent chemical in this plant? And from that, you have these essential oils have up to 100, sometimes 200 different plant chemicals that make them up. Well, you might have, you know, 99% might be prevalent in one where you might, that same chemical might only be prevalent in 10% in another, which makes the therapeutic efficacy a little bit different. So by and large, I have not seen, at least from the research, frankincense, rosemary, eucalyptus. Again, these are still coming from the same parts of the plant. They're very nuanced. And so I'm seeing very similar applications. So I personally um, use eucalyptus globulus and radiata um, based off of preference and 
they smell a little bit different. And my favorite frankincense is Serrata. I just love the smell. It's a really, for me, it's really earthy. It's different than Farina and the other different ones, sacred frankincense. And so Carteria is another um, genus of frankincense that people like to buy. But again, when it comes to therapeutic efficacy, it's not like, oh, you use globulus for these conditions and radiata for that. It's very nuanced. And if you are on working with a healthcare provider that really understands plant-based chemistry, they might do like high high level prescription. But for the most part, me and you, it doesn't matter. Um, I usually let my nose do the talking and guiding me. And I actually forget, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's globulus that's in my blend right now. I, I forget, which I actually forget because I was, I was putting the blend together. And what I do, by the way, is I actually, where's my little blend? I actually make the blend. Like I get an old bottle, I clean, I clean it. You can put these in your dishwasher. And I actually made my little COVID blend. Now, Mama Z, she'd be spanking me right now if she saw no label um, because she is a label maker freak. And so she'd be having a label that says COVID blend. But you know, <laughs> you have a blend and it should say sleepy blend, respiratory blend. You go and, and we should, we haven't done this lately, but we should go in our kid's bathroom and show you our little medicine cabinets, the roller bottles for our children, sleepy, immunity, feel good. Like she labels everything. Um, but that helps. I just know that this is it because it's the only one. And I let my, again, my nose tell me what's up. But you find a blend that works for you right now. And think of it, infection blend, right? Whatever blend, happy blend, prayer blend. It really helps bring you to a place where you feel much more in control. And I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that about essential oils because at the end of the day, when I want a mood boost, when I want to breathe better, when I want to feel better, a couple drops in that diffuser behind me, Couple drops in my hand with some coconut oil, give myself a neck rug, boom, it's instant. It's instant. I just did something good for myself. And maybe now more than ever, people need that empowerment because so much of what's happening is out of our control right now. Yeah. And when you want, like you said, you want your home to smell good, you want it to feel good. And so when you walk in, you kind of want that sigh of relief and relaxation. But let's talk a little bit about air fresheners because it's funny because I the gym I have that I was going to before we got shut down, they have these horrible air fresheners and they smell so strong that I literally, they're the plug-in kind. And I literally mm. unplug them when at wherever I am and like unplug them and then When I leave, I kind of plug it back in. But um, let's talk about how bad artificial fragrances are and how they can destroy your health and why it's so important to switch to essential oils. I actually just sent an email to my inner circle group. uh, We have a variety of email newsletters and I just sent it about the danger of air fresheners. And I recommended the importance, especially with people that are sheltered in place or forced quarantine. If you're in your home all day long, having an air purifier is so important that the air in our home can be up to 500 times more toxic than the air outside, especially if you're not ventilating it well. And that's a problem because the off-gassing, off-gassing from your building materials, from the chemicals that you use from your cleaning products, the body care and air fresheners are public enemy number one. If I were king, if I had a monarchy, I would, I would outlaw and, and destroy all air fresheners. I, it's, it's that bad. Mm. It, the research associated with air fresheners will shock you about how they can contribute to a number of neurocognitive disorders, like in your brain. Because what we seem to forget is that when you smell something, it has a direct impact. It's the quickest way of impacting your brain at a mm. neurological level right? One reason why cocaine addicts snort cocaine. It's instant. And it has an instant effect on your limbic system, your primal mood, your memory, your emotions. And the olfactory system is the gateway to the brain. That's why when you smell something, it could trigger fear, like smoke. It's, a, it's, it's an adaptive response that God gave us. Some people call it evolutionary response. We use our sniffer to help protect ourselves, to know what's going on. And the reality is, if a chemical is synthetically manufactured to mimic something we see in nature, the body doesn't have the correct neuroreceptors to interact with that. So it's like opening up a a lock with a key that's missing a tooth. Yeah, the key can fit into the lock, but it can't open up the door. 
and we call that a neurological insult. Air fresheners have been linked to autoimmune disorders, Alzheimer's, dementia, allergies, learning disabilities, and cancer. And like, why are they legal? Well, why are cigarettes legal? I mean, we know those cause cancer. We know those kill people, but people are addicted to it. People love smell. People are addicted to smell. And that's the danger that people are poisoning themselves, myself included. Oh, I was a junkie. I loved my Armani cologne. I used to buy Mama Z, all the wonderful Bath and Body Works stuff every year during their annual sale. I literally would stock up for the whole year. I had a box that all these different little soaps and lotions and potions and hand sanitizers at every anniversary, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, and birthday and Christmas, I had gifts stocked up that I would just, boom, you know, I don't want to have to go shopping five times a year. I'd rather go shopping once. And especially when things are half off. So I did that until I realized how dangerous it was. And then, wow, we have chronic allergies. That doesn't make sense. Like we're healthy people, you know? And once we kick out the air fresheners, the plugins and the bad candles, oh, the candles, anything with synthetic fragrance is well, just as, yeah. I was going to say, what about someone's clothing. So a guy came into my office the other day and I'm not joking you. He, cause and again, I'm more sensitive cause I don't wear perfume. I, you know, I only use essential oils. I don't, we have non-scented everything or we just scent it with essential oils. So the guy walks in and I literally almost did a double take because his clothes, you could smell the fabric you know, the detergent, I don't know what it was, the fabric softener, whether it was detergent, he literally smelled like when he walked in, I thought someone literally threw a bottle of Tide, like in my face, I had to go like this. That's how strong it was. So let's talk about laundry detergent for just a second and oh, yeah. how harmful that can be. Well, here's the thing about laundry detergent. If you are truly washing your clothes with, with water and soap and you're drying them, there should not be a strong scent. It should have been washed out. I mean, just let that sink in for a second. What these companies do are they use chemical surfactants to create a micro layer on your clothes so that it traps the smell, it traps the chemical, it infects your clothes so that they smell good. You're wearing that on your skin 24-7. So many people have psoriasis, eczema, so many babies have rashes on their bodies. No cream or cortisone shot or nothing can help you with that. It's because mm. you're walking around with chemicals on your skin. And I know that Mama Z does her own homemade laundry detergent with essential oils, correct? It's not hard. Yeah. I mean, on our website, you know, naturallivingfamily.com, I mean, for like 20 bucks, you can get three to six, depending on how big your family is, three to six months of laundry detergent. Um, a mutual friend of ours, Stephen Ezel, owns a company called My Green Fills. I highly recommend them. Um, it's a great subscription-based service and his story is profound and you got to check him out about how he even developed that product because his son had an uncontrollable rash as a ba infant and it was the laundry detergent and then they fixed it. So yeah, it, it, it really, it really, oh, you know, it's funny. Oh, this is, I can't believe he did this. He did a study because he really was trying to come to terms with this smell issue. Like, can I make a living selling unscented products? And his team and his marketing analyses and all these people said, you got to sell scented. No one's going to buy unscented, you know, laundry products. Well, he just needed to understand the reality of what people wanted against supply and demand. So he went, he got the brightest, whitest rag you could get at Bed Bath & Beyond. And he got two of them. And with that brightest, whitest, cleanest rag you could get, he actually wiped his car. It was a dirty car at the time. And his car was absolutely just dirty, filthy looking like a mechanic just used it all day. And he just sprayed some fabric softener, smelly stuff on it just to give it that clean smell. And he had the other white rag that was completely non-scented. Well, he went out to the mall. He lives in Traverse City, Michigan's where his plant is. Went to the mall and says, hey, coming out with a brand new product, I'd love you to do a survey. Please tell me which of these rags you think is cleaner. The one that's absolutely filthy with a smell that makes it smell cleaner or the one that has no smell that's actually literally cleaner. Like I think he said seven out of 10 people 
chose the dirty rag and said, this is the cleaner one because it smelled cleaner. And so what he's been doing is he's actually created a proprietary plant-based surfactant that allows the smell to permeate through the clothes that doesn't create a toxic layer that doesn't get on your skin and won't poison you. Again, my green fills, wonderful, wonderful product. And that's something that we also use because quite frankly, not everyone has the time to DIY. You know, right. Sabrina's pregnant right now. Um, four kids were homeschooling. I mean, you know, row, row, what happened to our world? Everyone flipped upside down. Um, you gotta do what you gotta do. So crazy, isn't it? Hey guys, I want to tell you about a great product that you absolutely cannot live without, and it's called Digest Aid. When you're stressed, you might not be able to produce as much stomach acid. And if you're eating a little more right now and you're stressed, you need help to digest your food. My Digest Aid that I created has enzymes that are capable of doing just that. It has both betaine HCL, not just HCL, but an enzyme pepsin that helps your body digest your food, which is really unique. And right now, all of our products are 30% off. Go to ChantelRayWay.com, click on store, and get yours for 30% off. Just use the promo code PODCAST. I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing a ton of cooking lately, and I've been having so many new recipes. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash free recipes to get the best kale dressing recipe you'll ever have, the dairy-free artichoke dip that you will love for completely free. I also want to give you my entire free smoothie book that has the best smoothies. One of the things that can help you lose weight is just to replace one of your meals with an amazing smoothie. So if you're eating two meals, just make one of them a smoothie. You can get my free amazing recipe book at chantelrayway.com slash free recipe. And our protein shakes are amazing as well. And right now they're 30% off. Go to chantelrayway.com, click on store and use podcast for the 30% off your protein shake. Yeah. All right. What other kind of food or remedies that you guys have kind of added more of right now to kind of really boost the immune system? Anything extra you've added or more of the same? When it comes to our food, we actually haven't changed a thing because that's something that we've really worked on over the years. One thing we did change though, was being a little more intentional about preparedness. And so Sabrina, when this first hit about a month ago, again, this is April, what, second, um, May, March, I, I just told her something's going to happen. Just let's prepared. You know, let's, we did not go out and buy 15 bags of toilet paper. We, we bought the foods that we wanted. And so she did a lot of freezer make ahead meals. So that way, because the reality is it's, it could be tough to find products, A, because a lot of the stores are still out of different kinds of foods, frozen foods, whatever kind of foods you might really want. But we don't have the time like we used to either. So when you're homeschooling and managing everything at your home, uh, it's nice to be able to get something from the freezer that you made that's healthy and put it in the oven. So that's something that we did different is just being more prepared and, and having insight into like, you know what, we just want to have stuff in stock. Um, you know, just, just little things like that, making, being just completely unwavering in our, in our desire and ability to be healthy. But you know, my son just celebrated his ninth birthday in quarantine two days ago, but we made a wonderfully naturally sweet and gluten-free cake and we did great right? So we still live the way that we live and we still do the things that we do. But one thing we haven't incorporated more is uh, what I call my flu shot. And that's my immu our immunity blend or your favorite immunity blend, essential oils, a little bit of Manuka honey, some um, lipospheric or liposomal vitamin C. And we've been trying to feed this to the kids. I add a little bit of coconut, um, you know, coconut oil, but having some almond butter is a great way. The kids love it. The kids call it butter. So you get some honey, some almond butter, you get some essential oils. It's like one or two drops and some vitamin C. Again, the recipe is on my website for those who are interested, but we've been giving that to them as preventative medicine. We do the same thing during flu season. So we're literally treating this like flu season right now and um, just doing our thing. I mean, at the end of the day, having the peace of mind, knowing that we've set up the systems in place. Cause you know, with all of Sabrina's cooking and our gardening and our toxic free living, it's just business as usual for us, but it's just been a matter of, you know, like 
like the immune boosting shot, or maybe we're using more immune boosting oils in the diffuser versus like some other kind of oil we might normally have. Again, we're treating this just like flu season. And so there's just a couple different things that we do. So talk a little bit about your overall nutrition. So what for you guys as a family, what have you guys decided that you've said, here's the majority of our food is this, and here's the things we're, we don't eat. So one of the biggest lies, in my opinion, biggest lies in the health industry is all good things in moderation. I'm sorry, let me scrap that. Mm -hmm. All things, I gave you what I thought. The biggest lies are all things in moderation. My, my proposal is all good things in moderation. So again, let's scrap that, right? So if you say all things in moderation, that's how you're going to live. That's really hard for someone like me. Again, I, I, I'm, I'm a recovered addict. What does that mean? Just, just a little bit of cocaine? What's that mean uh, for someone who might be struggling? Just a little bit of pornography, just a little bit of adultery, just a little bit of stealing? I mean, think of it. It, it's, it's, you have to abstain from things that aren't good for you. So what we've adopted is this lifestyle of all good things in moderation, which means if something's good, we'll consume it. But like the Bible says, eat, a, eat honey. Like it's in the book of Proverbs, eat honey. It's good for you, but not too much or you'll vomit. I mean, that's pretty much an exact phrase, depending on the version of the Bible you like to read. That doesn't mean that you could go back to, you know, Starbucks and get your high fructose corn syrup latte and just once a week, it's good. That's not part of our world. Like we consider that poison. And I teach my kids, sugar is poison. And so, yes, we just had a naturally sweetened gluten-free cake for my child, my son's birthday. So we don't abstain from things that we like, pizzas and cookies and cakes and things. We have those in moderation because we make good versions of them. So what we've done, is we've compiled a list. It's actually in our book. It's called The Essential Oils Diet. We've compiled a list of all the foods that could potentially harm you, create inflammation in your body, and essentially wreak havoc, wreak havoc on your immune system. And so what we're seeing are the people that are really susceptible to COVID-19 um, are the elderly, the immune compromised, and those that are just chronically unwell because they have diets full of processed pasteurized, pesticide-ridden dairy, um, eating meat that isn't clean, um, foods and fruits that are just ridden with pesticides and having sugar and other things, fried fatty foods, all these things do is create an inflammatory response that literally dampens your immune system. So yeah, we like sushi. We'll go out to eat, right? We'll get some brown rice sushi. And we actually go to restaurants that don't put sugar in the rice and that don't use bad vinegars. Like we, we vet the places that we go out to. Chipotle is a great place if you want a little all good things in moderation because they don't use GMOs and they have good healthy versions of the foods that you get at maybe a counterpart. You know, Panera Bread has some good options if you can get some takeout. But the reality is it's all good things in moderation. So figure out what's good, figure mm -hmm. out what's bad and focus on the good. And if something's on the bad list, it's not even in your home. You will not find sugar in our home, but you will find maple syrup. You will find honey and you'll find stevia. And you know what? We're totally okay with that. It's funny because um, I actually have, it's Proverbs 25, 16. I have it memorized. It's if you find honey, eat just enough, too much of it will make you vomit. And I even know another translation, which is, do you like honey? Don't eat too much or it'll make you sick. Because for me personally, I love sweets. And so I just have to, anytime I want to have, you know, any kind of too much sweets, I have to quote that verse. So I have that one right on the tip of my tongue. We at eat all lots times. of fruits and veggies. You know, you eat lots of fruits and veggies. And I know it's hard for a lot of people because the ketogenic diet is very popular and weight loss things. You know, I'm here to help people just, just be healthy. Um, weight loss is usually a happy consequence, is usually a happy side effect of doing what you normally should be doing anyway. But, you know, maintaining quality carbs to maintain energy so you can exercise and have full function is key. And that's what we're all about. So yeah, lots, and there's good, there are good grains out there. You just got to be careful, you know, navigating nuts and seeds and, you know, we'll have the occasional meat product, um, but we're really primarily plant-based. 
in a lot of ways. And that really, quite frankly, is the immune immune boosting type of diet that people I think need to adopt more than ever right now. Um, because you don't want anything to weigh down your digestive system. And people that are on the carnivore diet or keto diets, we're seeing them really not respond as well to this situation. Because again, a, a fat weight loss diet does not equate to immune boosting. And so it's like, you know, you got to choose what your goals are right now. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Oh, yeah. Thank you again for having me on, my dear people. I love you. I appreciate you. You could do this. We have resources. Chantel has resources. Check me out at naturallivingfamily.com. Um, everything's there. A lot of great stuff. Get plugged into one of the free screenings of our classes, the Mama Z's garden class, and whatever it is that we can do to support you. Let, let us know. We're here to help. Awesome. And you guys stay tuned. We'll have another episode coming up in just a bit. Bye-bye for now.